Hello guys, how are we all doing? Welcome back to Premier League Predictions. We're back with some more Premier League games this week. It's a slightly shorter episode because there is only five Premier League games to predict this week. We've also got the FA Cup predictions coming tomorrow and the Championship predictions coming on Thursday. We also had the Europa League predictions come out earlier today. There's a lot of football to go on, lots of videos, so get involved. I'm joined by Sophie for the Premier League predictions. How are you? Yeah, all good. I feel like the pressure's on a little bit because you're closing the gap down now. Yes, let's quickly run over the scores from last week where I did beat Sophie 7-5, which means she's still ahead because you were 10 points ahead at one point. Mm. But I've won for three weeks in a row, which means the gap is now down to five points. Yeah, it's all pressure on me now. Yeah. I'd be surprised if I can close the gap entirely this week because there's only five games. But let's see. The final thing to do before we get into the predictions, guys, is you know what to do. Hit that like button. It's free to do and you're doing us a massive favour. On the last Premier League predictions video, we were this close to hitting the like target. So let's make sure we do it this week. 1,500 likes. Seeing as there's only five games, let's set the like target just a little bit lower and we're definitely going to be able to hit it. Mm -hmm. Hit that thumbs up button. It's free to like and it is also free to subscribe. Once again, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to get involved. We're closing in on 59,000 subscribers. So what have they got to do, Sophie? Hit that like button. And, and subscribe. subscribe. On to the Premier League prediction, Sophie. We're going to start with Wednesday night's game at the Vitality, AFC Bournemouth versus Luton Town. Get your predictions in quickly because, as I say, this one comes on Wednesday. And the first thing I need to mention as well is Luton Town are featuring twice this week because they're playing on the Wednesday and then they're playing on the Saturday. This is a big game, Sophie. This was the game where Tom Lockyer collapsed. Yes. Um, and it obviously had to be... Uh, abandoned and replays now which obviously is the right course of action and glad to see Tom Lockyer is doing better now yeah. um, the game was actually 1-1 when it was called mm -hmm. off Luton Town were certainly in the game and I think they can come here thinking we could get something from this yeah. Bournemouth have been decent this season. There's no getting away from that. They are mid-table for a reason. But if you just look at 2024, Bournemouth haven't quite mm -hmm. been on the same levels. The only team they've beaten in the Premier League in that time is Burnley. And they couldn't even beat Sheffield United last no. week, Sophie. Um, they actually went 2-0 down. Solanke missed a penalty. They did get a draw, though. They did show yeah. character to get back Come into back, that. Yeah. So we will give them some credit still. Um, and speaking of coming from behind, Luton Town went away to Palace, Sophie. 97th minute Corley Woodrow equaliser and you had actually predicted 1-1 one, one for that one I think that was the only one I got right <laughs> Uh, it's a really intriguing game then, Sophie, this one. Uh, Luton Town, you've got to admit, they need the points more desperately. There is a sense that they're going to be very, very close this season. Whether they stay up or go down, they're going to be very close. They're three points adrift. They play Forest at the weekend, which we're going to come on to in a minute. And there is still that possibility of a Forest and Everton points deduction in April. So... Things are certainly not over for Luton, and I think they might be able to get something here. I'm not going to put my neck completely on the line and say they get a win, but I reckon they might get another draw. And I'm going to go for another 1-1, Sophie. Uh, Bournemouth, solid. I don't think they'll lose this, but mm. Luton Town are plucky, and I think they'll get something. So, 1-1. I was actually very tempted to say the same. I feel like a 1-1 is a very, very realistic scoreline. However, I am going to pick a winner, and that winner will be Bournemouth for me. I just feel like it could be a last-minute kind of goal. I do think it's going to be quite a close game, so I'm not going to go massively in favour of Bournemouth, but I'm just going to edge them to win this one. 2-1. 2-1 to Bournemouth. Yeah. Like I say, Luton Town fans, stick around, because your team's going to come back up in a minute because you play on the Saturday. Uh, but next up, Sophie, we are going to Turf Moor, where it is Burnley versus Brentford. Now, let's give Burnley some credit because they also got something at the weekend. They got a draw at West Ham. They went 2-0 up. An outrageous goal from Fofana, I must say. Um, frustrating that they couldn't get the win over the line, but they also could have lost it late on. So you take your point and move, but you need to build on it. And do I see them doing it against Brentford? Possibly. They've shown some good signs in the last game, but... If we're going to go off consistency, it's got to be Brentford. I find it very hard to back one team just because they showed me some good signs in their most okay. recent game. Yeah. Because that's all you've got to go off for Burnley. And let's go for a close game, but the Bees just edge it. Mm -hmm. Brentford were very close to getting something against Arsenal. They were. Yeah, so they, they would feel a little bit hard done by to lose so late on. 
I think they just pinched this then. Yeah. Burnley one, Brentford two. Yeah, I'm actually going for the same. I was half tempted to say a draw again purely because I liked what I saw in the last game for Burnley. And I don't often say that, but they're not doing it often enough for me. So as much as that was a good result, not the best because, as you said, they were 2-0 up. So to just walk away with a point, it almost feels like a loss at some points. But wow. they've got so little points that one point on the board is massive for them. It is, but at the same time, Sophie... It's not going to close the oh. gap, is it? No, it's not enough by any means, no. no. Um, so they really need to get something from this game. Ideally a win, but I I think Brentford are the better team. So I actually agree with your scoreline 2-1. I think what plays into the hands of teams like Brentford coming up against Burnley is Burnley, as we just said, a draw doesn't do much for them. So they've got no. to go for the jugular, yeah. which means Brentford can just exploit them at the other end. Exactly. So. I think Brentford edged this one, and so do you. Right then, on to the big one, Sophie, at Kenilworth Road. It's Luton Town versus Nottingham Forest. Really interesting this week with the Premier League predictions. Last week, it was all revolving around the top of the table, the battle for Champions League, the battle for the title, whereas this week, it's really centred on the relegation battle. battle. Mm -hmm. And Luton versus Forest, Sophie, is massive. a massive it's game. Massive. Obviously, we need to bear in mind Luton will have played in midweek before this game so they could have actually come out of the bottom three coming into this if they don't win they stay in the bottom three and it, it has a feeling that Luton versus Forest is huge because if Forest win they open up a pretty big yeah. gap um, if Luton win they overtake Forest if they mm. haven't already I have had a feeling this season Sophie that it could come down to these two and how do I even separate them? When it comes to pound for pound squad quality, I'd go with Forest. Yeah. When it comes to the togetherness, I think yeah. I'm going with Luton Town here. Yeah. Um, Forest certainly have that fantastic fan base I've spoken about a lot before, but there was some divisions when Steve Cooper left. Um, and I'm not here to say Steve Cooper would be doing a much better job than Nuno, but Nuno's not actually done great now. Mm -hmm. They're actually under a point per game from the 10, 11 games he's yeah. been manager. So it's not a great look. One thing I will say, though, is Forrest have felt rightfully aggrieved about a lot of refereeing decisions this season. Um, mm -hmm. Another one against Brighton that didn't go their way. There was a potential red card. And as we said for Luton, Sophie, they certainly might not have the most quality, but there is this togetherness. And I do really like Rob Edwards. I do. I I don't think I'm going to separate them. I'm going to be a coward and sit on the fence. The thing for me is, Sophie, it feels like a must win for both, mm -hmm. but I would say it's certainly a must not lose for both. The ramifications of losing this game could be massive. So I think it's going to finish a draw. But I'll say an entertaining one because... Both will feel like they can get at the other. So I'm going to go 2-2, two, two, which is actually what the score was when these two played at the city ground. Yeah, what I will say about the Forest fans at the moment is because a lot of the decisions aren't going your way, you've almost adopted a mentality and you've got to be careful when you do that because every time something goes wrong, you're blaming the ref when actually you've got 11 players on the pitch that aren't putting in as good a performance as they should be and really they should take some of the blame as well. Saying that, I do feel like they could come here and get a result because there's so much fight for both teams. They both need the points here so desperately. Oh, I was tempted to say a 2-2 as well, so I might go a 1-1. One, one. Okay. I'll go a little bit lower scoring. I think what you've got to factor in, Sophie, is if Luton go pound for pound with Bournemouth in midweek, they will be tired coming into this yeah. one, which gives Forrest the edge. Mm -hmm. But I also think the home advantage being with Luton gives them somewhat of an edge. Yeah. It's really, really hard to separate. And I tell you what, Everton fans will also be watching this with a vested interest. Luton mm -hmm. fans, Forrest fans, share your thoughts down below. It's great to have you both in the Premier League, but there is a sense that we could be losing one of you at the end of this season. On to the next game, Sophie. Let's go to a London derby. Let's go to Craven Cottage. It's Fulham versus Tottenham. Spurs are back in business, Sophie. We've said before this season they are a very streaky team and they're in a good streak right now. 4-0 yeah. at Villa. Yeah, I wasn't seeing that coming. Obviously, it helped that Villa were down to 10 men, but yeah, what a performance that was. Yeah, I think without the John McGinn red, Spurs win anyway. Agree, but I don't uh, think it'd be 4-0. Possibly not 4-0, no, yeah. I agree. Um, but yeah, they're looking very good mm. and uh, maybe they've timed their run perfectly however there is an international break coming up so you hope that doesn't take out the momentum from spurs uh, spurs's run right now 
Fulham, decent team, mid-table team. I predicted them to lose 2-1 to Wolves last week. They did. I think I've got to go for Tottenham, so Finn. They're in a, a good run of form. One thing I will say, though, is I believe Fulham did actually beat Spurs at home in the Carabao Cup earlier this season. But things have changed, and I, I'm going to go Spurs 3-1. Yeah, for me, Fulham weren't at their best against Wolves. And, yeah, I actually thought that they might win that game, but... They didn't. Anyway, I don't see them getting anything in this one either. As you've said, Spurs are very streaky and you've got to back them when they're in that streak. It does tend to come to an end at some point, but hopefully, as you said, they've timed it well that it won't end before the end of the season. So, they just look very good going forwards. So, 3-0 for me. 3-0? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so, yeah, very comprehensive there for Spurs. Share your thoughts, guys, on that game at Craven Cottage, Fulham versus Tottenham. Next up, we will go to the London Stadium, Sophie. It is West Ham United versus Aston Villa. Um, how about this, Sophie? Both sides have got to be a bit disappointed with their results in the Premier League last weekend. I'm actually disappointed with them both, too, because I backed them both to get a win at the weekend, <clears> yeah. and they both let me down. Yeah, we did. We, I mean, I feel like betting on West Ham to beat Burnley was a no-brainer. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't put any money on it, though. Yeah, it felt like a banker, actually. Um, they did come back and get the draw, as we mentioned, but... Um, yeah, not not great to be honest. Even worse though is Villa losing to Spurs because they lost 4-0. They've yeah. lost John McGinn and they lost to a team fighting for the same place as them. Yes, yeah. So for this one, both need to get back on track. You feel like maybe Villa need it a bit more. Have they got more to play for? Possibly. But with West Ham being at home, I reckon they could just get in the way and get a draw here. So I'm going to go for a West Ham 2, Villa 2. I reckon an okay. entertaining game at the yeah, London that, Stadium. That would be entertaining, actually. I think Villa really, really need the points. And as you say, they've got to have a little bit more fight about them. They've got to bounce back from that because that is quite an embarrassing defeat at home to lose 4-0. I've got to come back for this. But I'm not going to say it's massively one-sided either. So I'm going to say 2-1. To Villa so fairly close game but Villa they've got to have more fight for me after last week Sophie do you feel more confident Spurs get top four or is it still Villa's because <sighs> Villa still hold it but I think Spurs have got a game in hand yeah they do it's very very close at the moment it depends on how Villa come back from this now I agree if, yeah if they bounce back in this game I'm like okay do you know what it was just a blip but right now you can't take your eyes off Spurs because they are in very good form yeah, and we've said for a while this season that fifth place could get Champions League, but yeah. it looks more likely that they won't right now, so fourth is really um, what Villa and Spurs are fighting over. That wraps up our Premier League predictions. Guys, as I say, there's only five Premier League games this week. Share your predictions for the five of them down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on those, and we'll check out your predictions. Also, make sure to look out for the other videos we have got going out this week, with the Europa League predictions video already going out out today we've got the FA Cup quarter final predictions tomorrow which should be interesting and we've also got the championship predictions coming on Thursday and we'll have a vlog for the Wolves versus Coventry game in the FA Cup on Saturday there's so many videos so make sure to subscribe so you see all of them as they go out it's going to be a busy week while you are there please make sure you've also hit the like button it's free to do and it's also free to subscribe so like and subscribe and thank you for joining me Sophie thank you we will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.